Hello everyone, here is another video with OrgTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about chair conformer of cyclohexane and one and three diaxial interaction and how to calculate the energy for each conformer. Take a look to this cyclohexane structure. As you can see here, uh, there are Atoms, I mark them with white color. They are axial position. So three axial position on top of the ring. And you can also see three axial bond at the bottom of the ring. In addition of that, you can see uh, equatorial position that I mark them with uh, red atoms. This is the structure for cyclohexane. And there are two different position or two different bond, axial and equatorial. Here is how we can show cyclohexane chair. This bond with white color, they are axial position. As you can see, there are three of them on top of the molecule and three of them at the bottom here. And you see also the equatorial bonds here with pink color as well. So if we have a group on axial position, like a metal group, or if we have a group on equatorial position. These two position, they are not identical and their energy are different. However, as you can see here, by rotation of a series of bond, the position of axial and equatorial bond are changing. And you can see that the red atoms, they're going to the axial position and the white atoms are going to the equatorial position. This process called ring flip and the Axial and equatorial position, they have changed their position. You see here are the axial bond, and this time they are the red atom, not white bond. And white, they are on equatorial position. So let's say we have one group here on axial position, like methyl cyclohexane. To the other ring Philip process, we need to move these two carbon atoms. This one up and the other one is down. But we do it a step by step. I'm taking this one up, then the chair conformer converts to the boat conformer. Here is a boat conformer and the position of CH3 is here. Then for the next step, this carbon should go down. Then we have the second chair conformer. And because in the first conformer, CH3 was an axial, Right now, CH3 should be on equatorial position. So these two, they are the two conformer of methyl cyclohexane. But let's see which one is more stable and why. To understand the difference between axial and equatorial, first we need to draw the Newman projection of cyclohexane. If we take a look along these two bonds, then we see this Newman projection here. These two carbon are these two points, this carbon is here, a CH2, and this carbon is here, another CH2. Right now we can easily see the axial and equatorial positions. Like this hydrogen, they're axial, and these hydrogens, they're equatorial. And we can see that they are all staggered. We don't have any eclipse bond in chair conformer. Right now, if I put a metal group on axial position, then we have this metal group and this CH2 group in gauge position. Gauge position has interaction and it's increased the strain of molecule. It's exactly like gauge butane when we had two CH3s in this position. But if I put this metal in equatorial position, then this metal, it doesn't have any interaction with any of this CH2. So in equatorial position, there is no strain, but in axial position, there is a strain. So this interaction is happened between carbon number one and carbon number three. So because of that, it's called one and three diaxial interaction. And we can show it on the chair conformer in this form as well. We can also explain it in this way that when we have a CH3 or any other group on axial position, there are interaction 
between carbon number three CH bond with our group. And again, that's why it's called one and three diaxial interaction. The value for this interaction is depend to the size and aesthetic effect of each group. And there is a table for the value of one and three diaxial interaction for each group. The value in this table are for a single interaction with hydrogen. Like 3.8 is interaction of methyl group with one hydrogen on the axial position. And normally we have two of them. So this number, they normally should multiply it by two. Let's have some examples to see how we can calculate the energy for cyclohexane chair conformers. Here is the first example. I would like to calculate the energy for each of these conformer when I have one methyl on axial, one methyl on equatorial. When we have ring Philip, then this carbon is going down and the methyl is here in equatorial and the other methyl is going to axial position. This methyl has interaction with two hydrogen in one and three diaxial interaction. The value in the table for methyl is 3.8 kilojoule. So the energy for this conformer is two times 3.8 kilojoule. So it's 7.6. If we take a look to the next one, we see again we have one methyl on axial and one methyl in equatorial. So the energy for both of these two structures are the same. Because again, we have one axial and this axial can have interaction with two hydrogen here and here. If we number it, we see both of these hydrogen, they are on one and three positions. So the energy for this chair conformer is also 7.6. So the value for esterine in these two conformer are 7.6. Let's have more example. Here is the next molecule. If we have one ethyl here on axial position and one methyl here on equatorial position. After ring Philip, the ethyl goes to equatorial here and methyl, it goes to axial here. So in left side, we have ethyl, it has one and three diaxial interaction. So the value for ethyl in this table is four and we need to multiply it four by two. So two times four, the esterine for this molecule is eight kilojoule per mole. But on the right side, we have methyl and this methyl also has interaction with two hydrogens, one and three diaxial interaction. And then Two times the value for methyl is 3.8. So the answer is 7.6 kilojoule per mole. So between these two structures, the right one is more stable. And the reason is, and the reason is there is no interaction uh, on equatorial position. And on axial position, when we have bigger group, we have more strain. So it's better to have a smaller group on axial position. You can also see in the table here, when we have bigger group, the esterine value for the interaction is increases. For T-butyl group, it's 11.4. So the difference between energy of these two conformer is 0.4 kilojoule per mile. Here is another example. I would like to calculate the energy for this compound. When we have one CH3 axial and one CH3 equatorial, this is C style methyl cyclohexane because both of these methyl they're pointing up. Well, we have only one axial and this methyl, it has interaction with these two hydrogen and two times the value for methyl is equals to 7.6. But this is not the only strain we have in this molecule. When we have two group on one and two position, next to each other. They have always gauge interaction. Let's take a look here to this Newman projection again. If I have one methyl here on equatorial position and another methyl on axial position, these two methyl, they are gauge. 
and the strength for this gauge in cyclohexane is normally around 3.8 kilojoule per mole. It doesn't matter if I have one axial, one equatorial, or both of them there equatorial, because if I put the second methyl on equatorial as well, so when we have both of them on equatorial, again we have gauge. So when we have two groups next to each other, we always have gauge interaction if at least one of them there in equatorial position. If both of them there on axial position, they're empty and they don't have gauge, but they have a huge one and three diaxial interaction instead of that gauge interaction. So here we have these two groups, one equatorial and one axial, and this neighbor group, they have 3.8 kilojoule esterane due to the gauge interaction. So the total is 11.4. Here is the next example. We would like to calculate the esterane for this conformer. Ethyl here is on axial position and it has interaction with two hydrogen. So the value for ethyl should multiply by two. And methyl also is axial and it has interaction with two hydrogen as well. So the value for methyl also need to multiply by two. So from methyl, we have 7.6 strain and from ethyl we have eight. So the total strain for this molecule is 15.8. 6 kilojoule per mole and here is the last example we would like to calculate the energy difference between these two conformer so in the first conformer both of the metals are on axial and when we have ring flip both of the metals are going to equatorial so here each metal has interaction with two hydrogen So we have four interaction of methyl hydrogen. So four times the value for methyl is 3.8, 15.2 kilojoule esterine for this molecule. Here for second conformer, there is no axial, but we have two methyl group on one and two position. So we have gauge interaction, which is cost 3.8 kilojoule per mole esterine for the molecule. So the difference of energy is 15.2 minus 3.8 and the answer is 11.4 kilojoule per mole. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.